welcome to another episode of the Otaku Experience, the anime non-new show where we talk about the current goings on in the anime and the manga industry with our very uneducated opinions. Once again, I'm your host, Israel. I was trying to see if I could remember the intro there off the dome. I remembered it as kind of muscle memory, but how are you guys doing? It's been, uh, it's been a long time. In case you guys haven't, if you're living under a rock or if this is your first time watching the show, um, this is like the first episode in about a month, I want to say. Um, let me see here. Okay, here's the previous episode. All right. Uh, yeah, a month ago, January 11th. It is now March 3rd. <laughs> How y'all doing? Now, um, let's get a little serious for a second, okay? Because there are some things that, that we need to we need to talk about here. There we go. Um, the past, you know, month and however long that is, you know, uh, almost two months have been extremely difficult. Um, for the sake of the privacy of the rest of my family, I'm not going to talk about what is happening, uh, that we've been dealing with, but just so you guys know, no one's physically hurt or anything like that. It's just been an, a very, a very emotionally tough season. And I haven't had the time. And if I did have the time, I didn't have the weather physical, uh, strength just from do, working a lot more since, um, or the emotional or mental strength to try to film a video, even if I did have time. Um, but now, almost two months removed, uh, I finally had a, had a chance where things are kind of loosening up a bit more. We're kind of recovering a bit. Um, and I had time. And, I, and I've wanted to come back. I've wanted to do a show so badly, so badly. Um, because I, I've missed this, I've missed talking about it. I haven't kept up with any anime news. I haven't watched a single episode of anime since this has happened. So it's just been an, an insane two months. But I found an opportunity where you know, uh, you know, today where I could film an episode and you know get it out, which is good because we have something really big to talk about, which is the anime awards happen, the Crunchyroll anime awards, um, and we'll talk about that towards the end of the show. But uh, yeah, so does this mean that the otaku experience is back? Yes and no. Yes, in the sense that I'm going to start making episodes again. No, in the sense that it's not back in the way that you remember. Um, I cannot promise that there will be an episode every week. Forget twice a week. It'll, you'll be lucky if you get one once a week. I also can't promise that they will be long episodes um, simply because I don't know what my life is going to be like for the next foreseeable future. This could be a month. This could be a few months um, of dealing with this before things kind of get back to normal. Uh, but I just wanted you guys to know that I really wanted to come back. I've really wanted to come back this past two months, not just today. Um, and I've this has been a really tough season. And um, like I said, I'm not going to really get into the details just for the privacy of my family. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just been a, it's been an insane time, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about some anime. I do want to say thank you to everybody. There are people who reached out to me personally. There are people who, you know, reached out to me just like, uh, you know, publicly, uh, you know, everybody like, you know, was, seemed to be very, uh, you know, interested as to why I just suddenly like went dark, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better term. And I really appreciate that. I, I felt really cared for. Rob has been great during this time. He's been super gracious. He's been, um, you know, just, you know, all the, you know, if, if there's anything I can do to help, you know, all those things, uh, he's just been a really good friend this past time. So, but yeah, but you already knew that. Rob's great. All right. So with all that out of the way, we're going to get into this episode. It's not going to be a super long episode, but there are some things that I want to talk about because I've missed a whole crap ton of stuff. But before I do that, I'm going to turn on my fan a little bit. Okay. 
Uh, it was on the lowest setting and I was starting to sweat already. Uh, I have to get reused to the, the lighting. I see if I remember how to do any of this. Um, am I recording by the way? <laughs> just, just had to make sure. Um, okay, so here we go. First topic of being back-ish. So we're going to talk a little bit about Crunchyroll for a second before we actually talk about the Crunchyroll Anime Awards at the end. Um, this and some other stories. Um, so Crunchyroll uh, has been doing some stuff over the past you know, little bit. And uh, they apparently have been messing with AI, specifically in this case for AI uh, subtitling. Um, we talked about this before on the previous episode of the Otago Experience two months ago, where uh, someone asked about something that was happening with English dub translations or just dub translations. And they were going to start having AI do the script instead of having someone else do the script. Um you know, it translating it into a different language to get rid of like political agendas or whatever the case may be that changes what the original intention of the lines were. And I, you know, said I really don't like artificial intelligence being involved in art, um, even if I, I would prefer bad art than robo art, if that makes any sense. I would prefer a human badly doing their job than an okay or decent like AI algorithm based thing. Does that make any sense? Like when someone translates something, they're not just like, a, you, you'll never, ever, 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 unless you do with AI, have an objectively perfect translation from this to this. It's just not going to happen. You're just naturally going to add in your own little things. You're going to add in your own little interpretations of what that means. Just not even thinking about it. You're just going to do that. Um, and I think that that is good and that's healthy for this type of medium. Um, and so my answer was, instead of just going to AI, just fire whoever was doing that if you didn't like the way they were doing their job and hire someone else um, who would do that job better. And if they do it bad, fire them. But I don't think the answer is going AI. It felt to me like they went from one extreme to another extreme, which I talked about before. Um, but here they're talking about doing AI for subtitling. So they went from doing the dub uh, scripts to now doing subtitling. So basically... They're just doing, like, the only thing that humans are left in for the dub process is directing uh, and acting, essentially. Like, I mean, there's more to it than that. But basically, like, bare bones, that's all you have left. Like, forget the writing, forget the subtitle. Like, they're taking that out. So anyways, here, this comes to us from Anime News Network, and they say this. In an interview with technology news website The Verge on its December podcast on Monday, Crunchyroll president Rahul Perini confirmed that the company is testing the use of generative AI uh, on subtitling and closed captioning. The testing is an effort to optimize their processes to allow them to release subtitles in more languages closer to the Japanese release date of seasonal anime episodes. Now, I want to say this. I understand the motive here. Like, uh, I, and I mean, there's also another motive of we don't have to pay someone to do it now. Of course, of course, there's still that motive. But I do agree that, hey, it would be nice to have faster simulcasts. It would be nice to have subtitles in more languages. It would be nice for all of these things, for things to be more optimized, sorry, and for things to just move faster uh, and have a just smoother process overall. But I don't know. Uh, to me, I have less of a, of a thing about the subtitling than I do about the than I, I do about the translation itself. Like, I would prefer someone be working on the translation into the English dub rather than subtitling for just any language. Um, I think there still is an art to that, but if I had to pick one or the other, I would pick the translation to the English dub rather than the subtitling, personally. The company is also testing generative AI to assist users in personalizing their experience and discovering titles, as is testing AI in general for different workflows in the company. Crunchyroll previously released poor quality subtitles for the first episode of Yuzuki Family's Four Sons television anime in October 2023, then removed the episode after complaints over the subtitles spread on social media and Crunchyroll's own website. It re-uploaded the episode with updated subtitles after we explaining that it worked with the licensor of the series, for the updated subtitles. And they talk about the acquisition with Sony and all those things. So this one is a lot more of a mixed bag than the other one, like with the, you know, where it was just with like the um, the English dub translation. That one was a lot worse, in my opinion. Um, and that was something I would say is like an objective bad, at least in my opinion. Um, this is a little more of a gray area, like I understand it. And it's not as big of a deal to me as like the translation. Now granted, 
I don't really watch English dubs. Like this, this doesn't really affect me. So I'm really talking about something that doesn't really affect me at all. But it's it's the principle of that, you know, as someone who feels a calling to like be a director or to work in film or just be a storyteller in general, this stuff is very personal to me. Like I I love the sanctity of art. I know it probably sounds super corny, but it's true. And I don't like stripping people away from art. Um, even if, you know, granted, I personally think that those areas aren't like the most important areas, but I think I do worry about getting on a slippery slope of things suddenly going to an extreme of like, you're now having AI, which we've talked about before, AI doing animation, um, you know, AI making the, the music or like they're prompting it or whatever the case may be, you know, it, where you suddenly start taking out in the creative aspects, you start taking out the, uh, the the people. That's what I worry about. And so I just worry about the slippery slope. But just as in general, like this, if this in a vacuum and no other thing outside of it, I wouldn't really mind all that much. So this one isn't really that big of a deal for me, but it is interesting and it is showing um, just the continued trend towards AI, at least for Crunchyroll. Then another Crunchyroll story is this. So while I was gone, uh, Crunchyroll fully finished out and closed out Funimation for good, like it's donezo. Um, and on top of that, they closed out Funimation libraries. Like if you bought something on Funimation, like a digital library, and it's gone now, it just evaporated, which was awful, big L. I would have talked about it a whole bunch. I would have ranted, screamed, probably cussed a little bit, but that happened a while ago. And so now we're talking about the aftermath where the Crunchyroll CEO doesn't rule out buying more anime services. Uh, so now that the Funimation thing is like fully done, it's fully done in the past, you know, it, they bought it a few years ago and Funimation stopped receiving new anime to post on their, like they were no longer a licensor because they were owned by Crunchyroll. So everything that if it was licensed to Funimation just went to Crunchyroll, um, they still left the service up. But now, as far as I know, the service is like essentially done, like basically. The Verge interviewed Crunchyroll CEO Rahul Perini, who spoke about Crunchyroll's history of mergers and acquisitions, and how it's fortunately enabled them to land in, in the supportive environment of Sony Pictures Entertainment and Aniplex. When asked whether the big merger with Funimation meant Crunchyroll now felt stable enough to attack the market, or if there were more mergers and acqui acquisitions to come, Perini replied, We feel like structurally we're in the right place. We're in the right holding company so that we can go and attack the opportunity that's in front of us. Will there be a potential inorganic opportunities to add to our current growth? Growth, Prini laughed. Yes, and we would pursue them when they make sense. Uh, but I do feel like we're in the right place. We have the right structure to focus on our future. So basically, he's saying that they're not like in the market right now to buy more stuff, which granted, they don't need to. They're a freaking empire. Um, like when you think anime, you think Crunchyroll. Um, which is something like that's that's just they've they've Crunchyroll is just synonymous with anime um, at this point, and they don't really need to like who's their competition? Freaking like they own Verve. Like what's their competition? High Dive? Like High Dive just canceled their thing in like so many countries. Um, Netflix. I mean Netflix is a juggernaut in and of itself, but its primary thing is not anime, so people don't really subscribe to Netflix for anime. It's just something you get on top. So they don't really need to. I mean, there's maybe a couple things here and there, you know, swatting out the piracy sites, things like that, that maybe they could do. But broadly speaking, Crunchyroll is your only source of anime content at this point. Um, other than like your, maybe like Hulu, which I guess now they're on Disney+. Plus. Um, I think Prime Video gets some anime. I mean, you know, all the streaming services get some anime on some level. But Crunchyroll is basically like the thing. Like it's, it's, that's it. Crunchyroll is anime at this point. Um, so this doesn't surprise me. Uh, I don't think they need to like actively, like if he was about to say like, we're going to buy high dive next. Like if, if that was a thing I want, I wouldn't be surprised, but two, um, I would say that I don't think they need to, and they don't need to like high dive really only has two or three shows per season that people watch. Whereas Crunchyroll has the other 50, you know what I mean? And then Netflix has like one piece, you know, like that's, that's kind of just how it goes. Um, and so it's a system that is really profitable and really good for Crunchyroll, really beneficial to them because they're essentially the only shark there because the only other full anime service 
is a tiny little baby one. And then their biggest competition isn't even a full anime service. It's Netflix, which is their biggest thing is Hollywood. Like they make Hollywood shows. Um, and then they acquire things outside of that. So yeah, I mean, I this doesn't really sound like a, like a surprising thing to me. Um, and uh, I don't expect them to go buying like anything. Next thing I expect them to buy is High Dive. I do expect them to buy it eventually. Um, like whenever High Dive like dies i expect them to buy it um but that probably won't happen for like another year or two i don't see that happening in like the immediate future but anyways guys Crunchyroll uh is not ruling out buying other anime service but let's be real do they really need to but they probably will if the situation arises and our final uh Crunchyroll update uh is this so following the Funimation thing, like with the last one, Crunchyroll is now saying there are no announcements about the price change except for Funimation Legacy subscribers. So uh, something that happened is after, you know, they finished out Funimation, like finish it, it's done, close it out. What they did uh, or what you started hearing is people saying that now this that this is done, um, you might see a raise in Crunchyroll's prices. And there was a big whole fiasco and freak out about that. Um, and now Crunchyroll, uh, is saying that this is not true. This is not the case except for, uh, Funimation legacy subscribers who are coming over. So amidst, amidst the rumors of a Crunchyroll price change for subscribers, Crunchyroll told Anime News Network on Thursday that it had no announcements about a price change at the time. The company clarified that some people will experience price changes if they're switching from a Funimation-only subscription to Crunchyroll. Uh, Anime News Network also inquired about any possible price changes within the, la uh, the next two years, and Crunchyroll responded that it would be improbable to predict a price change for that time frame, aka there's going to be a price change by the end of the year. Mark my words. Um, Funimation's website lists that the subscription price change or price may change for some, but not all customers. Specifically, the website states that legacy subscribers for Funimation who have been grandfathered in to lower subscription prices even after Funimation had increased its costs will experience a price change upon the transfer to Crunchyroll. In addition, subscribers located in Canada will experience a currency change in their subscription. In Canada, customers with a Funimation annual subscription will not find their current plan available on Crunchyroll, and thus it will be canceled upon Funimation's closure. Uh, Funimation has sent its users emails about the closure and subscription pricing. So, personally, this seems a little messed up. Uh, you closed out their Funimation legacy account, so now they can't access the stuff that they own. Um, forget just like watching anime. You can't access the stuff that you now own. Uh, and then you're still going to raise the price on them when they come over to Crunchyroll. If I were them, I would, at least for like the first year or two, just say, hey, you can continue paying the price you've been paying and then it'll ease up. Uh, this seems like a big L to me to just be like, hey, you know, welcome over. Here's a couple extra bucks per month. Thank you very much for giving me that. And uh, enjoy Crunchyroll, even though we just took all the stuff that you've bought. Um, that was weird to me. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't really have so much to say. Like all these stories are like super like non like uh, like, oh, my gosh, like they're not like big stories. But I just think they're interesting. Crunchyroll is going through a thing. You know, they, uh, especially after buying Funimation or like finishing out the deal, like with Funimation, like that whole fiasco is over. Um, it, it is interesting to see what the future of Crunchyroll is going to look like um, as they grow into a larger like corporation. Because I do think that that's their big sites is they want to, not only are they already the face of anime, but they want to make sure that there is no competition ever. That's their be next big goal. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we see something like that in the future. But anyways, guys, with all this Crunchyroll news coming out, what are your thoughts? Okay, now, uh, another thing that came out uh, while, uh, well, yeah, I mean, while I was gone, but more recently, was the One Punch Man Season 3 uh, trailer. And it says by Studio JC staff, but this is actually from MAPPA, as far as I know. Uh, at least I, I could have swore it was. Isn't it MAPPA? Is it not? Is it not Mappa? Was this whole time, was I lied to? I could have swore, dude. Hold on, hold on. Uh, One Punch Man Season 3 Mappa. Is it, is it Mappa animating? Oh, what? According to the latest teaser, JC staff will be animated One Punch Season uh, Mappa is no longer its animation studios. Oh, so this is something that just happened, that we just found out. 
Whoa, this is another, this is a big story in and of itself, but we don't have time to talk about this. All we have to talk about is the fact that the One Punch Man season three came out, a uh, trailer came out. I thought it was freaking fantastic. Um, it looks amazing. Let me see if I can find the trailer here. Um, it looks amazing. And uh, it's it's just, I don't know why I did that. Here we go. Uh, it looked like it was animated by Mappa. Like this shot, I saw this shot and I was like, oh yeah, well, it's Mappa. Of course it looks like that. But apparently it's not. This is JC Steph. Oh my gosh. But yeah, I mean, it it just, it looks fantastic. I don't know about the story. I mean, after season two, we don't know about the story, but um, we will see, at least the animation will be fan freaking tastic. And so I can't wait to see that. That's just going to be a massive spectacle. No real thoughts there. Uh, no, I don't really give my thoughts on trailers, but uh, you know, just, just interesting, just interesting. All right. So another big thing, or, or not really a big thing, but another thing that I wanted to talk about was this. Um, so after One Piece, we started getting a whole bunch of shows announced. Uh, one of them is, uh, and movies, uh, you know, we got a My Hero Academia movie coming, uh, that was already announced, but it like really started picking up steam once Netflix One Piece came out. Uh, Naruto, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, and then of course, a Gundam movie, um, is coming. And uh, this is where the producer is talking about. Uh, the producer says that they're looking to the success of Hollywood's One Piece for inspiration. Um, uh, so the, the producer, uh, Narhiro uh, Ogata, has spoken out about the upcoming live action Gundam movie, comparing it to Netflix's One Piece live action series in terms of approaching it and other Japanese franchises with an international audience appeal in mind. This scares me a little bit because I mean of course this is something that we're not that that we shouldn't be surprised okay um one piece comes out it was successful because it was great but studios and corporations and companies are going to see live action anime can be really profitable and really successful we should make more of that and that's what this sudden surge is. So I, I'm scared that they might not take away the right lessons from One Piece and they might take away all of the wrong lessons from One Piece. Uh, there's no real big announcement about what's in the movie, so there's nothing really to talk about here. But I just think it's fascinating and also a little bit scary that so many are coming out after One Piece. And I do personally, I do worry about the future for live action anime after One Piece Let's be real. I was hopeful. I was all, eh, it's going to be great. I was in the honeymoon phase. Now I've kind of grown up. Okay. I'm, I moved in with one piece and now they're freaking like, I noticed that they leave a mess in the kitchen. Like, like it's not as great as I thought it was. Right. And you know, I think we all need to accept that and we all need to just prepare, embrace ourselves, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. So get ready for just a long season of like middies. It's the same thing with comic book adaptations. Remember, there were tons of live action comic book movies. All of them sucked until like Superman and Batman. And then they kept continuing to suck until X-Men and Spider-Man. And then they sucked a little bit more until Iron Man. You know, like, like that's the thing. And, so, and then they finally got in their groove and then we're kind of back in the suck area. But, you know, they they it took a while to hit their stride. And I worry that... It, it will, how do I say this? It will, um, taking their stride, you might not have a project. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try another, pro okay, that didn't work. Let's try, okay, that didn't work. Instead, you're having one project do really well. And so 57,000 other projects are going at the exact same time. And then if they don't work, that's all of them at the same time. Suddenly your audience is totally soured to live action anime adaptations. And then you're like, oh, well, this is a dead medium. And then we don't get any. And that's not me saying that we should be getting live action anime adaptations. That's not me saying that they're better than the anime adaptations. That's not, me, blah, blah, blah. that's not me saying anything. All I'm saying is that some of these anime, like One Piece, can't have shown that it can be a well worth adaptation in a different medium. Not all anime should do that. Uh, not all anime can do that, and not all anime should do that. Um, but shows like One Piece, and I worry that they're just like, oh, anime but with real people is really money so yes really money um and they are like oh my gosh i want all of that money let's make all of this without actually trying to see what actually went into one piece that made it so good could it have been that the creator was involved could it have been that everybody involved had a reverence for the show and knew it too could it be that 
because of the anime adaptation, they knew what worked and what didn't work. Could it be that they heard audiences complain? Could it be that they, you know, they did adapt here and there to change things from the anime and from the manga to the live action to make it work better as a live action? Could it be all these things? But I worry that they're just going to be like, Gundam movie, go. Just I need just a mecha plot. Just slap the name Gundam on it. Have the designs. Have a character here or there. Have a cameo. And we'll be good. But I worry that that's not, that, that's, that's not what it's going to be. That's not all your ingredients. You need so much more than that. And I worry that they are missing that. And that's really scary to me. But anyways, guys, are, do you have the same fear that I do? I'm suddenly like super pessimistic about all these live action anime adaptations coming out. And uh, it's really scary to me. But anyways, guys, with all that out of the way, it's time to talk about the big one. The big award or the uh, the big story, which is an award, uh, and it's the anime awards, the winners specifically. So here we go. Crunchyroll Anime Awards. You know, I slept through, you know, they actually emailed me. They emailed me uh, and they said, hey, we would like to use a clip from your 2023 anime awards uh, stream, reaction stream that I did for a promotional video. And I thought I said yes. And then they... It wasn't in the promotional video, so I clicked, and I was like, oh, I didn't hit send. <laughs> and so hopefully they'll ask me again this next year, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, you know, I am a celebrity. Hopefully I'll be a judge next time. Hopefully they'll involve me there. But anyways, let's see. Here are the 2024 grand winners, um, and let's see. Uh, do they have, like, a, a better layout? It's kind of mid. Okay, I guess this is the layout. All right, we'll start from the bottom. Uh, with all the dumb awards. So, uh, all the best voice actor categories. As you see, Chainsaw Man won a bunch. As you can see, these are the MAPPA awards, basically. I, I heard that uh, being said, that, that these are the MAPPA awards. We go up to, okay, so English. Uh, I believe this is for Denji, yeah. So we had Ryan Colt Levy, English dub. Pretty cool. And these were all the nominees. Not too shabby at all. Um, dude, the guy who plays uh, Ichigo on Bleach is fantastic. I believe it's still the same guy from the original. I watched the original in the English dub, and he's great. He's fantastic. Whenever I think of Ichigo, I hear that English rather than the Japanese, even though I've been watching the Japanese for Thousand Year Blood War. Uh, for best Japanese uh, performance, we have Gojo, uh, Yuichi Nakamura. Uh, pretty cool. Yeah, he's, he's pretty solid. All right, then we have all the genre awards. I don't really care. Romance, fantasy, drama, comedy, action. Uh, oh, another thing. Uh, I forgot. Because of what happened last year, Crunchyroll changed its rules. Um, where now half of these shows are from fall 2022. Um, and no shows from fall 2023 are here. So it's a really weird layout where it's like sometimes you'll see Bochi the Rock here and you're like why is this on here? Like, it's so good, but like, why is it on here? Like, it didn't come out. But then you have to remember their boundaries of what is eligible are different. So your must protect at all cost character, once again, was Anya. I believe she was also that last year. Uh, best supporting character was Satoru Gojo. Best main character was Monkey D. Luffy. Not too bad. Best director was Shota Goshonzo, which, hey, you know what? I can't knock that. When I watched the first episode of Jujutsu Kaisen season two, I was like, Dude, like the tone is like so eerie and the way these shots are going, the angles they're choosing, like to me, it was just a perfectly set. I think like, I think some people underestimate like, like your film snobs and your anime snobs, they underestimate just how great sometimes just your, just an action franchise can do. Like, I think some people are like, no, it has to be like this really art house drama type thing. And it's like, no, like an action for lack of a better term, blockbuster franchise like Jujutsu Kaisen, to me, had some of the best directing of last year. It's just it's just true. Um, and so I don't have a problem with that. I think that's pretty cool. Best anime song, we all knew this was going to be the case. It's Idol from Oshinoko. Best film, my best film as well, uh, or an best anime film of 2023 was Suzume. Fantastic. Best score, Attack on Time, the final season, the final chapters, special one. So yeah, is, was Special 2 even nominated, or is that going to be next year? Oh, no. Oh, no. Special 2 is going to come out next year. Oh, God. So Attack on Titan is going to be nominated again next year. This is the worst thing. Okay. This is going to be... Oh, I shouldn't have come back. Okay. Um, but, yeah, no. Uh, I, I don't really remember the score for this, um, personally speaking. I mean, Attack on Titan in general has always had the best scores. Um, 
or, you know, a really good score. Uh, but, you know, going for like five seasons now, um, it, it, it's almost like ju- they're just like adaptations of the previous score, which doesn't mean that they're like any worse or less of or worth any less praise. But it's like, uh, I don't know, I, I would want to give it to maybe like a new score. Um, and out of these, it would probably for me be between Bochi the Rock and Suzume, just off the top of my head, like I just remember, I can remember, you know, bits from the Suzume score, like the do 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 do. I remember that, um, and so I probably would have given it to Suzume. Suzume, personally, best ending sequence is Akari from uh, the. This is the first half of Jujutsu Kaisen. I think both halves were eligible, uh, and best opening sequence was also from Jujutsu. Not Idol. Wow, that's interesting. I think it's wrong, but hey, you know what? fine uh best continuing series obviously one piece one piece had an amazing year um and best slice of life bochi the rock i don't know why this isn't in the genre categories um best art direction demon slayer you know what i can't even fault them for that um because the concept art and like just the lighting it's just it's just a beautiful show to look at so you know i can't fault them for that Best cinematography, you just guys too. I was just talking about the shot compositions. Uh, yeah, best. I would give that as well to Jujutsu Kaisen season two. Best new series, Chainsaw Man. Um, I don't. I don't even remember. See, this is the problem. I don't even remember. Like, what the? What were the nominees? Uh, oh, you gave it to Chainsaw Man over freaking Tengoku Daimakyo. Oh, L. Best animation, Demon Slayer. Uh, season. This is all season three. Um. Yeah, I mean, but it, I mean, the best animation award is just the Demon Slayer award at this point at the Crunchyroll Anime Awards. Best character design, Jujutsu Kaisen. I would have given it to Oshinoko, personally speaking, but that's okay. Um, and best in original anime, Buddy Daddies. I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh, I think I would have personally given it to Mobile Suit Gundam, but I will take this. This was my number two anim- uh, original show from last year and anime of the year, of course. I'm sure you already know is Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, which went up against all these. I genuinely thought it was going to be Vinland Saga. I knew it was going to be between the two. So I, I remember, I told you guys, don't be surprised if it's between the two. But I thought it was going to be Vinland Saga because I was predicting a cyberpunk edgerunners type win where it wasn't a super popular in the sense that not as many people watched it, but it was really well regarded. And I figured that Vinland Saga, while not as watched as Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, it had the best reviews of the year. So I just figured that would be it. But I guess not. Maybe uh, uh, Cyberpunk Edgerunners was just an abnormality. But something that's really cool or really funny about this, this might as well be the Goofy Woofy anime community for this episode, is uh, we had some record breaking. And so starting off with the wah wahs. Chainsaw Man breaks the record for losses at the cha- at the Crunchyroll Anime Awards. That's hilarious. Uh, the 8th Crunchyroll Anime Awards just saw the popular Chainsaw Man break the unfortunate record held by Ranking of Kings with, for the most losses at the Anime Awards with 19 losses. Oh my, you, you know, this sounds like a bad thing, but if you think about it, this just means that Chainsaw Man was nominated in so many categories. Now remember, this is the Crunchyroll Anime Awards, so they nominate like seven shows across the entire thing. So, I mean... It doesn't really matter, but I mean, still, you know, it is what it is. Another record that was broken was by Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, and it is now the most awarded show at the Crunchyroll Anime Awards. It won 11, breaking uh, uh, My Hero Academia Season, what season was that? Is that Season 3 or Season 2? Something like that. Why is Joe Biden on my screen? Um, in 2018, and that show had 8. But now we have 11. So it'll be interesting to see how these continue going forward. And here's our uh, our awards once again. And yeah, listen. I slept through the awards. I missed them. Totally missed them. Didn't even know that they were happening until after they were done. But, you know, I'm less mad about the winners this year than I was last year and probably any year before that. Probably just because I just know what to expect and that's to expect nothing. And then at this point, if you expect nothing, you might still be disappointed, but not as much. Um, Yeah, I mean, there's still the audience voted awards. um, There's the popularity contest awards, whatever the phrase is. And it's true. Um, I wish that there was more... um, 
I don't I wish there was more diversity in these awards. Uh, and that's something that we get with the Anime Trending Awards. And those actually happen this week on Saturday. And so I will be hopefully streaming that on my channel, um, as well as covering that on uh, probably the next episode of the Otaku Experience. But anyways, guys, what are your thoughts on Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 winning at the Crunchyroll Anime Awards and becoming the most awarded show uh, in Crunchyroll Anime Awards history? What do you think about Chainsaw Man having the most losses in Crunchyroll Anime Awards history? Let me know what your thoughts are on all of that. Now, uh, we're going to get into this, something that I should probably not even talk about because I'm not educated enough to even comment on this, but we are anyways because it's just tradition. We're going to talk about the audience rankings of shows that I have not been watching for the past two months. So The Dangers in My Heart Season 2 is still at number one, eight weeks. Holy crap. You know, this is week eight and it's been eight weeks at number one. That's insane. You know, I watched the first episode and I thought it was all right, but gosh. Classroom of the Elite Season 3 has spent two weeks at number two. A seventh time loop, I've never even heard of this, went up one spot to number three. Mashal went up three spots to number four. A Time of Affection went up one spot to number five. Hokkaido Gals are super adorable, went up two spots to number six. Villainous Level 99 went down two spots to number seven. Dr. Elise went up one spot to number eight. Uh, the Wrong Way to Use Healing Magic is a re-entry into the top ten at number nine. And bottom tier character Tomozaki, uh, second stage, is a new entry into the top ten. Going on over to the anime corner, rankings we have uh, dangers in my heart also at the same rank um as well uh it and it says for the eighth straight week like dude is this gonna be anime of the year for people like oh my gosh um and that has a 11 percent uh gain from last week uh free run beyond journey's end uh it went up two spots to rank four and that got seven percent of the vote Mashal magic and muscle season two went up four spots from rank seven to uh, rank three and that got 6.17 percent of the vote classroom of the elite season three went up or went down two spots to number four and that got 5.24 percent of the vote uh ragna crimson went down two spots to rank five and got 4.63 percent of the vote seven time loop Stayed at the same rank at number six with 3.76% of the vote. The Apothecary Diaries went down from number uh, went down two spots from, uh, to number seven, um, and that got 3.64% of the vote. A Sign of Affection uh, went up one spot uh, to number eight with 2.91% of the vote. Delicious in Dungeons uh, Dungeon went up seven spots to rank nine with 2.89% of the vote. And Chain Soldier went up two spots to number 10 with 2.85% of the vote. I'm out of it. I had to think about what I was saying the whole time. I remember before I left, I was able to like just just spit these out. Um, but now I'm like, what am I looking at? Because I have to hop all over the screen. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of the Otaku Experience. It's good to be back. Um, but remember, uh, the episodes are not going to be Sunday uh, and Thursday. I don't know when the episodes are going to be. This episode just happened to, I'm filming it on a Sunday. It'll probably be out tomorrow. Um, but, uh, you know, I can't promise when the next episode will be filmed. I can't promise how long it'll be. And uh, yeah, I hope that that's okay. Um, and I will, I'm, I will try to get things back to normal as soon as I possibly can. But I want to thank you guys so much for your patience. And uh, yeah, it's just been, it's been tough. But I, I do feel the love from everybody who's reached out. So I want to thank you guys so much for that. And I will see you all in the next episode.